What's going on, people? Mike C. Town here. Happy Metal Monday. For those of you looking for a review of the new Leviathan album here, psych! Thought you was, fool. No, I actually did the review with my homie Anthony Fantano on his channel. Um, I'll put the link in the description section down there. So make sure you click it and check it out. A good time was had by all. Real quick, I just gotta share, man. I recently discovered this uh, Krabby's Alcoholic Ginger Beer. This shit is the bomb. Don't worry, Black Metal and Brews, I'm not trying to move it on your territory. That whole thing is all yours because no one else can do it the way you do. I just had to quickly just share because this is extremely tasty um, for those of you that don't like beer. Um, it just tastes like ginger beer. It's awesome. Anyways. Uh, what I am going to talk about today is the new Enslaved album entitled End Times. For those of you that don't know, Enslaved is an extreme metal band from Norway. Uh, they used to be considered a black metal band, but I think they've kind of abandoned that term now. Um, their music still has black metal leanings, but they, they have a lot of different elements mixed in there now. So I guess it kind of makes sense to like not tie themselves to a tile that no longer fully represents them. Their album that came out in 2012, Retire, was incredible to me. Uh, powerful, killer riffs, hard drums, great melodies, you know? It, it was a record that, that really didn't sound like any other record at the time, you know? I heard comparisons to Opeth and uh, Woods of Ypres, but those comparisons are a bit light, you know? I, I think this album totally stood on its own. Axima, Ethica, Odine was a masterpiece, and I was left wondering when they were done, like, what they were going to do after that, you know, could they actually follow that up properly? And and with Retire, they totally did. You know, to me, that album is almost on par with how incredible their previous album was. So so after Retire, I was left with the same feeling like, could they do it again? Could they could they follow up another masterpiece and um, fast forward three years and we get in times? I can't tell you how excited I was to hear this album. Uh, when, when 1,000 Years of Rain came out, I jumped to listen to it. And on first listen, I thought the song was killer, man. Great riffs, great melodies, and, and, and overall, it was just a great listen. Uh, it didn't blow me away, but I still enjoyed it and had me curious to hear what the new record was going to sound like. So when I finally heard it as a whole, I have to admit, I was a bit disappointed. Um, I think the record is good, but it's not awesome. And, you know, given their history, the album feels a bit restrained. It feels a bit pulled back. You know, the riffs, while they're good, they don't pack a punch like they did on the last few albums. This album, rather than going for the knockout punch to the face, I think they concentrate more on the constant lighter barrage of hits. You know, it's more about atmosphere than it is about being extreme. Uh, 1,000 Years of Rain is really the closest you're going to get to, to the sound they had on Retir. You know, songs like Building With Fire and the title track, In Times, they just they just don't pack that oomph for me. Um, Building With Fire reminds me more of like a heavier, a heavier post-rock record. Uh, maybe something that like Isis or uh, Envy would do. And, and the track, In Times, the title track, it gives me an older Opeth feel. Um, that can be good or bad depending on if you dig older Opeth. The riffs come across almost a bit weak. You know, the drums aren't pounding. Um, I don't really get a whole lot of, of feeling or passion or, or really a whole lot of interest in the vocals this time around. But, um, but again, it's all good. It makes a cohesive project. It's just, it's just not giving me a wow factor. Overall, I definitely like this album. I just don't love this album. Um, so yeah, man, to answer the question of if they could follow up their past two masterpieces with another one, um, it's kind of up in the air, but for right now, and for me, the answer is no. Um, they followed those masterpieces up with another great album that definitely has that enslaved feel to it with the black metal meets prog metal sound and even adds some nice surprises with the, uh, the lighter passages in the album that they've mixed in but for me personally they don't really supply a new record with knockout power like their previous releases but i've been known 
to not like a record on first, second, third, twelfth listen, and then fall in love with it after that one day when it just randomly clicks. Um, so my opinion could change down the line. Um, we shall see. The other record I want to talk about is Wolfheart by Moonspell. Uh, Moonspell was one of the first extreme metal bands I got into, and Wolfheart was the first album I got by him. Uh, I still remember hearing uh, Tenebrarum Oratorium on one of the old black metal comps. I know I'm always talking about those, but um, I remember listening to that song and thinking, shit, this band rules. And uh, soon after, I picked up Wolfheart and was totally blown away, man. They quickly became one of my favorite bands, man. Uh, I bought every release I could find by them. I bought shirts. Um, and I was a loyal fan up until Antidote, which is where I think they jumped the shark. Um, and I could get into the total decline that they went through. But instead, I'm just going to talk about Wolfheart for now. Wolfheart was a perfect mix of uh, goth and black metal. And it was not cheesy like like Therion or Tristania or uh, Lacuna Coil. You know, this shit was dark and it was heavy. Um, unlike any other band, they were actually able to to marriage uh, the, the two genres of goth and black metal so perfectly with these killer riffs that were super memorable, um, these thick drums that were played perfectly, uh, keyboards that fit really well with the music without sounding goofy like, uh, like Cradle of Filth or like some of Demi Borgir's stuff. And the vocals, the vocals were really scary and sinister, but at the same time, they were also romantic. The songs were really well written, powerful atmosphere, uh, crystal clear production where all the instruments are layered on top of each other very nicely. Uh, the songs are all well played while catchy at the same time. Uh, you have that you have that harshness of black metal with the warmth of, of goth mixed in. Contrary to what some people would say, I actually would say that this is more of a goth metal album with some black metal elements. I know some people like to just put this into the black metal category, but I think that's a little that's a little uh, unfair. You have songs like Of Dream and Drama, uh, which pretty much sound like a straightforward goth rock song. You know, especially with the, uh, the midnight ride chorus, you know, and that, and that piano solo in the middle of the track that totally makes my ears perk up every single time I hear it because it's, it's so unexpected, but it's so awesome at the same time. Um, and you do have songs like Love Crimes that's more of a, of a black metal sort of song with the chord progressions, but it's still got that heart. And I think this whole record is got that heart from, you know, Vampiria to uh, even the even the closer, Alma Mater. I'm tempted to say the star of this album is the singer uh, Fernando Ribeiro, otherwise known as Langsia. But uh, I think to say that, that would almost be like ignoring the fantastic riffs of Mantis. And uh, But what I mean is that Fernando has this perfect, deep, baritone, gothic voice that fits so well with these songs. And, and having that thick Portuguese accent just accentuates the sound perfectly. But yeah, I think this is a really important record. Um, it's a daring and diverse record. It was a genre-bending album because, like, no one could really just dump this into one bucket. You know, they were one of the first bands that I can remember that that was really willing to take a chance in making something that could not be easily defined, um, along with uh, Ved Bunzend, of course. But um, but yeah, I think this is, you know, one of Metal's most unique and interesting releases. When you when you really think about what Moonspell was mixing together on Wolfheart, you know, the the almost Celtic sounds with the with the flutes and the chanting. The, uh, the romanticism of goth rock and the harshness of black metal. To be able to pull off all three of those sounds together without it sounding gimmicky or like a mishmash of bullshit, I think that's a real triumph, man. So yeah, go check this album out. It's definitely one of my all-time favorites. And um, let me know what you think in the comment section. All right, so that's it. For this edition of Metal Monday, I hope you guys enjoyed it. 
as usual, thank you for living, thank you for loving, thank you for being you, and I will see you guys next time. I is bitches. That was a really bad goth impression. I'll I'll do better next time, guys. I.